just sit back, relax, and enjoy my story. What do we have here? We're a lot better than you. The A4s are the future. What was that? The LMS have their own streamlined engines. You're bleeding mad! We won't be there long and we will be fine. You're not an LMS engine. Oh, globbits. my word! So, you were caught? I was. What did you do next? Well, my driver panicked, my fireman tried to calm him down, and as for me, I did what anyone would do in a situation like this. I ran out of Houston. God, I knew this was a terrible idea! I was bleeding right! Oh, why was I given a driver with a cockney accent? What did you bleed in say, Brack? Uh, nothing, Paul. I say a lot of stupid things when I'm in a panic. I should fix so too. God, I hope this goes unnoticed. I decided to stay away from Top Shed that night and sleep in the carriage shed. The next morning, I was back at King's Cross. I acted natural and let the passengers board the coaches. Two other engines were present. Morning, Brack. How are you today? Fine, thanks. Good, good. Tell us, Burke, what was your last destination? Why, it was Peterborough. Oh, really? Why, I thought it was Houston. Excuse me? Why did you do it, Burke? <gasps> How do you know where I went? You thought that we were all asleep the night before, didn't you? Well, guess what? I was only dozing, so I know where you went. And not only that, you even convinced your own crew to take you to Houston, the station of the LMS. No, 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 it, it, it's not what you think, I swear. Oh, don't you dare give me that. Now, now, Crush, shell down. If an engine has done something wrong, then there's only one thing to do. Oh? And what are you suggesting? A trial would be in order, if you ask me. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. A trial of an engine. Oh, globbits. And so a trial was agreed. And that night, it was at the Roundhouse in York, that would decades later become the Great Hall of the National Railway Museum. I was very nervous. I looked to my left, and I could see Fornaby. Say it ain't so, Burke. Say it ain't so. I then moved my gears to the front, and there were three engines who would be trialling me. There was the chief who was representing the express passenger engines, Green Arrow representing the mixed traffic engines, and a J-52 sail tank representing the tank engines. Everyone started chanting amongst themselves until the chief broke the silence. <laughs> Can I have your attention, please? And everyone became silent. Now, tonight, we are here because this D11 director that you all see on the turntable was sighted at Houston. So, Burke, is this true? Were you in Houston yesterday? Yes, Chief, it's true. Why? What possessed you to do it? Well, it, it, it was the, the, the streamlined Princess Coronation Pacifics. Are you saying that you're a secret admirer? Calm down, Jared, and let him finish. It's got nothing to do with admiring. It's just that I'm fascinated. Fascinated? Can you explain why? Because they don't appear to have a face. And yet, they could still see and talk. I see. 
Wellbrook for a many engines who have faces and many others who don't and the same could go for some rolling stock coaches and even vehicles but the coronations however I know nothing about them so I assumed that they were faceless well when I was there I only saw one and when it spoke it sounded like the voice was coming from underneath the streamlining faceless engines can still see and speak you know Burke but we don't know how that works the engines chattered amongst themselves and their crews again until the chief spoke up. No more from you for now. Let's see what your friend has to say. So I was moved and Thornaby was requested to be placed onto the turntable. We understand that this is a stressed time for you, but we are only here to help your friend. So just take your time. I understand. So, Thornaby, how long have you known Burke for? Since 1926. Are you and Burke best friends and trust each other? Yes. And did Burke tell you that he was going to Euston? No, because I too am in rivalry with the LMS and the fact that Burke of all engines, like you, Fornaby, that will do. Fornaby was understandably again emotionally worked up about the situation, and so the three engines told him to return to his place and have me back on the turntable. They had more to say. Burke, D11 Director, you are a loyal and true to your word engine, and always following and obeying the law. But, unfortunately what you did was unacceptable, and now you are not to be trusted. I'm sorry, Burke. However, we have been talking, and we will be fair. We are going to give you three options. A scrapyard, remain in your shed out of service for the next ten years, or work on another railway where you'll have no sightings of any LMS engines and no contact from us. Deary me, how awful! Those were the rules, I'm afraid. I did want to be scrapped, obviously, and I did want to stay out of surface, so I chose to be exiled. I was given one final night with Thornaby, and it was a hard night. For both of us. Pretty cold tonight. Well, it's November. What do you expect? Thornaby. I'm sorry about it. Don't speak to me. Sorry. I said don't speak to me. Thornaby. I'm on our side. I'm back. Listen to me. Do you know what I think of the Coronation Scots? They're nothing more than upside down bathtubs on wheels. And I can't believe that I'm good friends with an engine who is a secret admirer. Thornaby, please don't be like this for our last night. As soon as you go tomorrow morning, the better. I'm feeling so hurt and emotional right now because of you and what you did. Not only have you betrayed the LNER, but you've also betrayed me and our friendship. I don't even know who you are anymore either. So just... Just be quiet for the rest of the night and leave me alone. Trader. And so I stayed quiet for him. When Thornaby got emotional, he wanted no one to speak to. And so we both went unhappily to sleep. The next morning, Green Arrow arrived to inform me where I'd be going. Good morning, Green Arrow. Good morning, Burke. How was your final night? It was so-and-so. I've come to let you know where you will be going. What railway am I going to? It's in Portsmouth. The Southern? Yes, Burke. I'm sorry, but those are the rules. I'll give you time to make your farewells. I understand. As soon as Green Arrow left, I looked at Thornaby, who was still looking at his buffers. I even wondered if he was going to cry. 
Well, bye then, Fornaby. I hope we meet again. The Raven Q6 said nothing. But as soon as I departed, I heard him whistle. And after I whistled in return, I began my long journey to an uncertain future. Eventually, I arrived in Portsmouth. Well, look on the bright side. At least we still have our jobs. I didn't reply. I just looked towards the main line. And before I knew it, I had my first sighting of a sudden locomotive who gave me a nasty look. Glomets. If the southern engines are going to be like him, I think the shed would have been a better option. At that moment, a second southern engine pulled up. But this one looked a lot more friendly. Ah, oh, you must be the newcomer from the LNER. Pleased to meet you. Uh, are you talking to me? Well, of course. My name is Arthur, and I am an N15 King Arthur class. What's yours? My name is Burke, short for Lord Berkeley, even though I don't feel like a lord. And I'm a class D11 director of Great Central Origins. That's a fantastic title. You think so? I don't think so, Burke. I know so. I used to work on the Great Central before moving down south, so it will be an honour working alongside an engine from the Great Central. It will bring back so many memories. Come, Burke. I will take you to the Roundhouse where you can meet everyone else, and for all friendly. All but one. Well, if he does give you abuse, me, Hannah, or his crew will keep him quiet. And just ignore him if he does. And so Arthur took me to the roundhouse where there were three resident engines. An 060C class named Hannah, a little terrier tank named Stepney, and an arrogant T9 Greyhound engine simply named Greyhound.